The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and we're looking at the Dow down 72 at 27,038. The low today is 27,017. Yesterday, it went underneath 27,000. And you can see on this left side chart here, so daily, weekly in the middle, monthly on the right, that there's a cup formation and a little handle. <clears throat> now, in the Chapman Wave methodology, if there is a spike, a really sharp spike, before hitting the previous high of 27,398 on the, uh, July the 16th, if there is a power move that goes right through it and then holds decisively above that level, not the high of 27,307 from five days ago, because we've been in that consolidation we've been talking about now for well over a week. Last Tuesday, Wednesday, I think it was, that I said, I think we're going to bump into a lot of resistance. And on Thursday in particular, I said, uh, this is going to be a very important session. Maybe we're making some kind of a shorter term top. So now we've been going down for about four sessions so far, days young. It could be a very strong update at the end of the day today after the Fed speak. But this is what I'm looking at. <clears throat> Within the context of patterns, this particular pattern suggests that there needs to be a close, probably three out of four sessions, above 27,306, but at least two sessions above 27,398 to say, hey, the MACD and stochastic in the weekly chart are just okay, but now they're very strong, and now you've got the talk from the move from the 25,339 low that was made, um, that was uh, September, I'm sorry, that was August the 16th. And that's a move that can now take you from a V-shaped pattern to a higher high on the right side, and that really raises the support level. It also starts leg D above 27,378. That starts leg D in the monthly. That's going to be really important. And if it can go into the 27,550s, it treats this whole area, the Chapman Wave inside track, rising support level. It was resistance level. It will become a support level. At this particular point, it is a massive resistance repellent zone. So I don't know what the Fed's going to do, because look at this. If you look at the TLT, skyrockets from the 134 area to 148, I'd say 14 points, a 10% move in bonds is quite spectacular, um, and then pulls back very sharply to the 136 level, a 12-point decline is also pretty spectacular. You don't see that very often. No, not in this, not short, this short of time. So... It says to me that there's going to be, probably there's going to be some confusion as to what the Fed really wants to do. You've got that within the Fed itself. You've got some people talking aggressively uh, to lower rates. Some people say, no, 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 we don't, we don't see any reason why. The uh, housing, uh, housing market is doing quite nicely here. Um, there are a lot of you know, some good earnings reports. Federal Express's earnings report last night really was something to do with trade. It has to do with a lot of other things. If you look at the IYT, let me just do this for a moment, the IYT, which is the uh, transportation index, way off the all-time high of 2,209 uh, back in 2018 in September. Uh, it did plummet down to the 174 area and has rallied really strongly, 25 points to the 199 high that was just made. Now, I might have to change this. Might be, this might become a G slash B if, uh, in the alternative Chapman wave count and not a B 
uh, by itself. If they're, look, the stochastic's already gone above, well above 80% to 96%. Let me just give you the exact figure. The stochastic went to, yeah, 96.54. That is huge. And then within a couple of sessions, goes under 80% to 77%. Part of that has to be because of, of the F FDX. If you look at the XAL, which is the airline index, this is the ARCA airline index, it's down 72 cents today, 98.56. It is way off its highs, most recent highs back in 2018 in the 124 area. So there's a real mixed market here. And I think that's going to be reflected by the Fed this, this afternoon. And that's the reason why within the Chapman Wave methodology, within our, the opening call, my daily newsletter, that's the reason why we took profits in that REIT that we had, that CCI, Crown Cork, had a spectacular move. Well, at least for us, it was really quick. Went from 130, 135, let me just do this right now. It went from the 135s, or where we went long, and we took a little off at 145 and a quarter, then 148.21, and all out uh, at about 138. Uh, we just out because this had a spectacular move. And this IYR was, is really telling us I, CCI, which is part of the I, I YR, the REITs index, is saying, watch closely because the IYR itself is held quite nicely. So putting it that, this is a package where you can get capital gain and dividends. But if you're looking at just rates, that move from 148.90 down to the 130, I should have put that in there, 136.54 low that was made four sessions ago, 136.54. Point one, I can't even remember what I said. Let's call it 34. Uh, look, one, all right, I have to check it out. A little too quick there, and my threes don't always work on this keyboard. Uh, 136.54. One three six point five four. I like that. It's got one three one three four five six. It's missing the two. All right. So bouncing to one forty three and a half points in a couple of days. Yeah, that's okay. Ah, uh ah. -uh. I think there's a little problem here, and that says to me that unless the TLT starts to rally back now, I think later at some point it could because of that weekly, uh, the monthly peak C that's being probably made this month, unless there is a rally into the 144.30 or higher area in the TLT, I think rates are stuck in this kind of moving up gently, well, quickly in the short term, but not if you're looking at it over a period of time. This is really T and X dot X. The 10-year, look at this, again from 1.429, 1 1.1429, to the high of 118, no, 19.03. Hey, that is a huge move. But if you're looking at it from 32.48 in October of last year, 3.248 to the low of 14, this is just a little bump, a mere bump in the road. So I think it needs, it needs to digest uh, the TLT bonds, need to digest the huge gains that they've made always goes excessively to one way and the excessivity i'd say about a 20 to 30 percent excessivity factor here and if you take it not from the rally that started in bonds at about 150 151 but if you take it down from the 143 42 area where it really started back in march this is you can expect that time is going to be used up okay just quickly i want you to show you crude oil give it back a chunk of the gains that were made um, monday morning tuesday wednesday we we're already back down to 58 off the 18 to 63 is up if you're not currently using the taz profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon the Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so we could expect going into the uh, next hour, we've got an hour and a half to go before Fed speak. I don't know if there's a conference or anything going on, whatever it is, uh, they're going to they're gonna do what they have to do. And I, I think that probably they're going to say something like, like, like they're going to lower the rate right now, but um, we might have to wait for the next uh, lowering, uh, something like that, because there's really a mixed picture for them. Uh, from, from what we know that they look at, there's a mixed picture. Um, that's, that's one part of it. The other part of it is that you had this disruption with crude oil. We don't quite know how it's going to resolve itself. It might not be that easy. We might just be seeing this reflex action. And then all of a sudden, there's a slow rise in crude oil going to the 60 level, and then 61 and a half, maybe 62 and a half. And all of a sudden, if you break to a new high above the high of 63.14 in the continuous contract, um, anytime in the next week, that, that could be a problem. That could be a problem. So, and the VIX index right now, you see, I, I've got a number of mixed messages here as well. The VIX index is rallying. It's up 77 cents at 55 at 15.21. It's in a level. It's in an area. I'd say this morning to subscribers to my opening call, I always put the TVIX just to give a, we, we don't very often at all use it as an instrument to trade. Occasionally we will, but I, I use it as more as a guide as I do. I have about 15 to, to 16 or 17 bullet points every single day. Some things I, I look at, uh, for the, we're always talking about the diamonds, what the ranges are, the QQQ, what the ranges are, the um, uh, TLT, what the ranges are, um, the, G, the uh, 
the gold contract. I actually used the GLD, uh, the GDX, I'm sorry, GDX as a kind of a proxy. And I give parameters. So yeah, it's a really detailed report. I give every day. I spend a lot of time on this. And it's not automated that I can just press a button and it all works. Why? Because in the Chapman Wave methodology, I think a lot of people have now found that if you automate it, you can get you get too many alternative counts, and then you can skip some really important mo uh, modifications that I've made over the many years that I've been doing this. Very subtle, but subtle enough to be really important. For instance, I was asked about CTAS. Uh, Dave wanted to know about. Uh, <clears throat> can't remember now exactly what the. Uh, well, where would be a good entry point? Let me see if I can find his. Uh, Oh, boy, I should have just remembered what time it was. Uh, huh. All right, I'm not looking. I'm not finding it right now. I will find it because so, I'd like to get it exact. But the question was, where would a good entry point be on CTAS? Well, CTAS is Syntas Corporation Overalls, Uniforms and Rentals. I'm, I'm, this is the reason why I'm a little cautious here. In fact, I've got a feeling that instead of breaking out to the upside, we don't have to smash to the downside, but we could start to see a rotational correction occurring. It's already underway. There are some stocks, even in the Dow, there are some stocks that are doing fantastic, some stocks that are really doing terribly. So I'm looking at this. I'm just about to put a down arrow in the weekly chart of Syntas. I'm already in a sell mode in the daily. So I'm going to say, Dave, first of all, I don't think Syntas, unless something spectacular happens this afternoon, CTAS tra uh, trading at 248.32, down a dollar 63, that is just too big a move. 270.36 uh, on the uh, 20th of August pulls back to the 255 level, then rallies back in a V shaped pattern at, to 270.24, 12 cents from the previous high. If it made one penny higher, I would have had to call that an alternate count D. And then look at the MACD, the moving average convergence, how negative it is. Look at the stochastics. Stochastics down to 13 percent. And look what happened in the weekly chart for the first time. And look at this chart, please, folks. I don't. I, I know that the theme has been this market is just not going down because um, the Fed is there and they're going to be backing it up. And uh, I'm just looking and I'm saying, look. There are areas, we are still long. We have not long, really nice long positions. But they're all in, in Ds. One has to still make a D. It hasn't made this D yet in the daily. We always look in the chapter and wait for the fourth highest peak to go to a leg D and then a peak D. But the, look at the MAGD crossing positive in Syntas way back early 2000, February or so. Then it crosses positive, and it hasn't turned negative until right now. Now, that's just one tool in the Chapman Wave methodology. But there's another tool that's saying we are really close to getting a down arrow, and that's the price closing this, this Friday underneath this 14-period moving average, uh, which we're at 248.38, but that is at 250.07. A close below that will say not only do you have a sell signal, but there's a real good chance that you can immediately upgrade Syntas. This is overalls, uniforms, rentals to a, a weekly sell mode. It doesn't say, it just, this is a description. It doesn't say, oh my God, sell mode means that it's going to go from 240, uh, from 240s down to the 200. No, it says the trend has changed to down. The, the, the nomenclature, what it's called, because of the deepness of the of the slide and because of the technicals failing and because it's closing under the fa un, under the key technicals upgrades that to a sell mode this is really important i could overlay let me see if i could do that what did i do last night i had an overlay right here let me see if this so i've got what did i use i used um i've got the dow i've got Home Depot, and I've got Syntas. Okay, I did this last night. I, thought, <laughs> I did so much work. I know I sometimes don't even remember where the charts are or what they are, but I just remember the impact that it made. Look at this. Here's the Dow in black. This is a monthly chart. Look how often these guys, Home Depot and Syntas, gave you that confirmation of that buy signal. 
because the low of 2000, I remember we went along the Dow the day of the low 2006 um, the, through, through the diamonds. We got them at 56.56 or something like that. Um, and look at this. This low here in the Dow back in October of 2002, well, that coincided exactly with Syntas's low, except it went to a lower low when the Dow had a divergence by didn't by not going to a lower low. I think the semiconductors were like this, and the S and P did make a lower low in March of 2003. Wait a minute, Home Depot also coincided with its low back in February of 2013, and then they gave this fabulous buy signal. Except. Both of them start to fail a little earlier than the Dow, and then they made their lows later on, right, with the Dow in March of 2009. But wait a minute. Let's find other places. These lows coincide. But wait, do the tops coincide? Well, the Home Depot top back in December of 2099, it was January. I think it was January the 14th that the Dow made its high. What was the high? 10,700 um, 10, and... Yeah, 10,701-ish. Um, and then Sintas had already made its high back in January of 2099, a year earlier, and plummeted, and then actually had a counter chain rally before uh, turning down. So the, you think you found the golden rule, you found what's it, Jason's magic fleece? Turns out, no, 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 no. It gives you something, but not everything. Look at the low that was made right here back in August of 2015. Dow makes its low, Home Depot makes a low, and Syntas makes a low. So it can go inside beautifully for lows and sometimes even for tops as far as Home Depot is concerned. <laughs> Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back. So we're looking at Cinta, CTAS, down $1.52 at 248.43. I did find it. Dave said, good morning, Baz. I was looking for an entry point for Cintas. Thank you, Dave. Uh, P.S., the gold and silver exchange down the road closed and is now at Dickie's Barbecue. Um, so, so he probably remembers that I had said maybe three years ago. Yeah, I think maybe three years ago I said when the gold and silver exchange that opened up uh, here in uh, Newton, uh, just fairly near me, um, if I start to see signs that it says uh, going out of business, that's going to say to me, uh oh, um, they've done it for the gold and silver, and maybe that that'll be the first time that we start to see gold and silver really start to move on. But I think that he's done very well. I think this guy's stay. I've never spoken to him, but he's there and he's. Seems to be staying in business, and my suspicion is that because of the the profit that he makes from getting the gold and silver jewelry, that that's really part of his business. I don't know. I'm just guessing, but he survived that terrible four years. I mean, it was really a four five year slump in gold. Uh, you'll hear more about it tonight when Tom does his workshop. Uh, should be a very good webinar, of course. Um, so I, my my thinking is yes, this is in this is interesting because this guy just couldn't survive until this last big run up in gold, and that's kind of tough. So I feel sorry for him. But I I'm I'm looking at these things. I always look at different things as clues. But so far the guy down the street is he's done fine. It's, looks like you're still in business. So, okay. So, Sintas, all I'm going to say now, I had a quick, a quick email that came in and said, so why didn't you short Sintas? Why? Because this big, first of all, Sintas, I'm not getting, I, I haven't been getting these signals yet in the overall market. So, I like to get everything together. Remember, we did get the top uh, uh, last year. I talked about it, talked about it, and we got the top. That we managed to short the top uh, in the Dow. So I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying, is this an aberration? Is this just a is this a rotational correction within the area? So last time what I did is I quickly grabbed a, a Marriott. Didn't grab Marriott itself. Grabbed the chart of Marriott, and yeah, Marriott made an all-time high of 149 Marriott International hotels, and then cascaded to November, December lows in the 101 area. Rallied very sharply to 144s, and now uh, having gone back to 124, big. These are big moves. Is now trading down. It's really struggling. It's at 129. It's not breaking down, but. I'm watching it closely because this is what I'm thinking here is that we get a rotational recession. We've seen this before. The whole oil service industry, oil and oil service, had this huge slowdown. Uh, so that was a rotational correction. That's a recession in a particular industry. If you look at the, um, if you look at uh, Hilton, no. This is not Hilson. This is Hyatt. Hyatt also made a major high back in 2018 in the 84, 85 area, slumped to 64. That's a 20 and 30 percent pullback. Rallied sharply to the um, last high of 81 in the 81s. Goes back down to 71, and now it's trading at 75. So I am watching, and I think that what, what we are looking at, mm, what I am looking at is that there's a chance. That we're looking at this rotational correction, we'll see it in 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 areas like whoever needs to have overalls and and uh, uh, uniforms like the hotel industry, resort industry. Okay, so back to Sintas. I'm saying, don't buy. I will know a little later today whether this is going to go much lower or not. I, by certainly by Friday weekly cl close. If it closes really poorly. I think that we're going to be in for a little tough time here. So I'm looking at this as if to say I think we're somewhat overbought, especially yesterday's Monday's buying and Tuesday's buying when markets should have been down 350 points in the Dow based on the oil news. And everyone said, oh, ho oh, hum, let's just do some buying. So I think we're, I, the way I'm looking at the charts is that I'm, I continue to see limited upside, not that they can't be. And as yet, I don't see a, a crash to the downside, but I do see some sideways action with lower highs and lower lows as a good possibility. We've, oh, I didn't talk about this. Let me just do it now. IND 
DU. Look, the Dow had this spectacular move in the, let me go through this right here. In the monthly chart, it went from the December low. Uh, yeah, I didn't need the whole thing. I just needed this. It went from the December low of 21,712 to the high of 27,398. But on the way, it stopped and it stopped dead and then reversed down and went down to the June, the June 3rd low. That was an intra-month correction. The whole thing was just one one month of making uh, almost an almost a new uh, all-time high, and then right down to the 14-period moving average below it. In fact, and and I think that this could be either a smaller rally, a smaller decline, or a much bigger decline. My bias right now is to think smaller decline, and therefore now I have to look at stocks a little differently. Because, yes, we did have a buy signal today in a particular stock. I have a rule of thumb, 136. You can see that in, in these uh, big rallies, the big sharp moves up, that if you can go one bar or three bars and make a new high in, after a peak, that's really positive. When you start to go more than three, you get to that six rule. And once you get to six, it really takes a lot of energy for a market to rally even to another higher peak than it just made on the left side. So this is going to be very important. What happens now, certainly going into the two o'clock time frame, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a Dow rally. I did say to subscribers, I'm going to give you an update. I don't like giving intraday updates because I've almost always found there was one time where we've timed perfectly. We bought the DXD two times short to Dow right at the the best price because of the Fed, and I gave an update. It all worked out. Every other time, and this goes back years, every other time, I could have got an even better position the following day. So I'm giving an update to subscribers. I'm not sure yet whether I'll have a trade. We've got our long positions. Most of them are in the Ds or maybe even Es in the daily. They're ready for a pullback. I don't want to get out of something that is just making a pullback in the daily when the weekly is still very strong. So I have to think this through very carefully. So going back to Syntas, I'm saying I would not put a trade on right now, even if it bounces. I think it's going to do have to do more digesting. So I, for me, Syntas is, is, is a no-go right at this moment. I might change my mind this afternoon or this evening. Um, but at this particular point, I just don't see it as a play on the upside other than a bounce. I think it's going to have to do quite a bit more testing because of the negatives that I see in both the daily and the weekly. The monthly is still very strong. Next question I had is, well, um, okay, there's a question. What if there's a spectacular rally today? And by Friday, we're making new highs. We'll deal with that. We're in the long position. I don't mind that. I'm, the difficulty here is how do we play it if we need to be looking at a digestive phase going to lower lows and lower highs? That's going to be the issue. So as I said, 135, we used that particular technique to buy this morning. We bought almost at the low of this particular stock we've been patiently waiting for. And now it's up very sharply from our, well, technically from the low of the day. It's at the high of the day. Um, hey, I, I don't know if it's going to make that leg D. I just don't know. Everything about I love the stock. The daily was making me nervous at 135, uh, 136 pattern. It better get going quickly because within six days, it's got to make that new leg D. We'll see what happens. Uh, but we've got a very tight stock, so we'll handle the trade. Okay, question. Let's just go through this very quickly. DXY, the secure investment. The Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Tom O'Brien will be hosting a special 60-minute live webinar Wednesday night for Gold Report subscribers titled, The Next Leg Up in Gold is $1,794, Find Out Why. In this 60-minute webinar, Tom will be discussing how the bond market moves the gold market, where the gold demand trends are coming from, how gold outperforms fiat currencies over time, how gold trades an average of $110 billion a day in value, along with many more topics. Subscribers to The Gold Report just closed out three positions in the last week for profits of 28%, 35%, and 51%. Now is a great time to sign up for The Gold Report. You don't want to miss out on the next big run in gold and gold equities. Sign up now for The Gold Report by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and get ready for Wednesday's live webinar with Tom O'Brien. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So we're looking at the dollar. The dollar is up 11 cents at 98th century. Everything could change after 2 o'clock today. You could see the dollar plunge below a 97.70. You could see the dollar actually move up to 98.85. Um, this is right on the cusp because the technicals on the dollar are not that great. The stochastic is trying to turn up, but the MACD is not so good. And it's underneath the 9, the 14 period moving averages. I still, we still long the dollar from April of last year. But I'm just saying, I think the dollar needed technically to have a little bit more digestion. I love these U shaped patterns. Remember, I talk about it all the time in the Chapman Bay methodology. U shaped patterns are arch formations, a straight line. That's all we have straight line up and down. Cup formations or arch formations. So he has a big arch formation in the weekly chart, holding very nicely in the weekly chart. So that's that's the dollar. Those are the parameters to be watching. Look at the EUR USD, the Euro dollar currency pair. It's just stuck. Yeah, a monthly chart, yeah, it's a green candle. Great, it's had plenty of green candles, but it is in leg E to the downside. Stochastic stuck at 10%. Magdi is very negative. It needs price movement to actually help everything. But you've got price movement in the Magdi and Stochastic of the um, euro dollar currency pairs trading 1.106 down 0.008. But this is really important. It has had the price movement. Therefore, if Euro suddenly starts to power above 1.1109. That was the high of the 13th. That's going to start leg C. That's going to be a that's going to be a good move, and that's going to help the weekly chart. That's what it needs. If it drops and it goes under 1.1.10, 1.103, not good. USD JPY, the yen. USD JPY, USD JPY is the euro dollar is the yen uh, dollar currency. Yep, it finally made that D. Remember, that's what we were looking at. There it is, leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. The last peak D back at 108 saw the slump to the downside to the 104s, and now we've got um, now we've got another D, and it's underneath the it's a D underneath the previous uh, high. 
Underneath the 200 period orange, 200 period exponential moving average of 108.98. Leg, strong leg A, but it's had one, two, three, three higher legs to the upside, sorry, higher highs to increase this leg A, single leg A, in the weekly. So it's kind of ready for a bit of a pullback, but the MACD and stochastic are still very good. So the 107.40 is going to be absolutely key support over the next three days if it pulls back. But wow, if it even touches 108.66, another 50 cents up from here, the 108.98 200 period moving average becomes a magnet. It could even have a recycle, an instant restart. It's going to be very important. Uh, I was asked about the GDX. The GDX is holding okay. It's down to seven cents. Had a fantastic move. The last move was from 26.04 to 30.96. Four points uh, in such a short move in the gold. Um, this is called the uh, this is the Van Eck vectors gold miners the miners. So this is a leg eight to the upside in the daily gray a because it's under the previous heights even under the previous little peak on the left side at about 2860 uh, so this is going to be important because the stochastic did turn around nicely you did get price movement the magd is flat it's really struggling so the magd is not a big help and i think it's going to be a bit of a drag even if there's a pop up in the gold but you've got that arch formation the weekly did go to a down arrow with a 30.96 the decline on from the week of the 6 of September. The MACD, though, hasn't turned negative with the stochastic down to 73%. I think that if you look at gold, I still believe that gold is stuck, at least for now, in a digestive phase after a spectacular move. Look, it's down in this lower region. With, with, the, with what happened in crude oil on Monday, Tuesday, and Sunday, I should say, Saturday, Sunday, and what happened in the market Monday and Tuesday with crude oil, you can see the same kind of response here in gold. Gold is up 3.6. If this is really a harrowing international uh, situation, we would be looking at gold either at a new recovery high above 1566 or at least in the 1540s. So, so far, he's young. Anything can happen by the end of the day. I just think that the, the Fed is going to be kind of stuck here. I don't think they're going to be aggressive to, to, to lower rates, and I don't think they want to be aggressive to raise rates. To talk about that. They want to be just kind of do what needs to be done right now and then talk their book. And their book says, I think we need to wait a little bit longer before we get aggressive to any any of the sides. I think that's kind of what it is. In a way, that's what the market is is anticipating by its mixed reaction here. By one hour and, and 10 minutes to go, this is really unusual to see the market, the Dow down 68 and the S&P down at almost nine points with no rally into an unchanged level just before the Fed speak. Now, if the Fed says something and it's spectacularly bullish, there won't even be room for the shorts to cover because it's just going to be such a quick move. And then we'll have to wait to th until Thursday to see is there a pullback after the big move up or is this it? Is this going to be breakout activity? My thinking here is that whatever happens next week, we kind of back uh, Dow, d testing the 26,000s in the Dow. Um, S&P is under the 3,000 level. That's kind of my thinking right now. Um, all I can say is that that's the way we're looking at it. Um, now, one thing that I want to look at is, I think I've covered all the questions that came in. Wait, I, I, let me see if there are more questions coming in here. Uh, yeah, OK, a bunch more. Um, Paul says, you have covered all your bases. You couldn't possibly be wrong. I don't know what you're saying. Um, be aware housing starts are at a 12-year high. Okay, Paul, you have this way of talking. Even if it's just in conversation, it comes out angry and it comes out accusative. I have My subscribers are not complaining. We've had really good gains. We've managed the market really well. Yes, I missed the last low, but we were long. The only thing we didn't get is the Dow, but we've had other positions that have had 10 to 20 percent gains. Uh, we've made, yes, we've had 1 to 2 percent losses. Um, I don't know what you're doing. So I'll just treat it as if this is just your conversational speech, okay? 
not capitals. You have covered all your bases. You couldn't possibly be wrong. I don't have to be wrong. I just want to be right. Okay? So I'm doing my very best to keep my subscribers in the right position. Okay? Now let me explain what I'm looking at. I'm going to give an update, even though I don't really want to, after Fed speak. And what it might do is just say, let's hold off and wait until tomorrow. It's going to say, right now, I want you to, mm -mm, I want you to, mm -mm, something else. But I've stated very clearly the parameters that we are looking at. I spoke about the gold for weeks. I've been saying, stuck in a trading range after breaking out, it'll come back into the range. Did it do it? Yes or no? Yes. I spoke about crude oil. Crude oil. Stuck in a range. Did it break out through a news event? Should it come back into the range? It is now even lower. It's down $1.40. It is getting back into the range. I spoke about the Dow. Whoops, I spoke about the Dow. Oh, there's a break. I can actually hear the music. Having an arch formation that could go to a lowercase h and an m. If it breaks out, it can go higher. Did it go higher? Yes. Did I say there was resistance in the 27,300s? Yes. Is there resistance? Yes. I don't know what you want. I'll be back in a moment. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best in everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. 
right, folks, we're back. So Dow's down at 69. Let's go to 70. S&P's down 9. So this is one of the few times that we haven't been running into the hour before a Fed speak where the market is either up and then comes back down to almost unchanged or down and then comes back to unchanged. So that says to me that there's a little bit of worry out there and the, the Fed is really going to have to produce something spectacular. I, I'm suspicious of what's going on. I see a couple of things that are saying to me, remember, I... I don't have time to do this. I've done it almost every day. I've shown you my Chapman Wave automated resistance levels just above in almost every single uh, instrument. Uh, IWM has got a little way to go, and it's actually only at peak C. So there's room to move. But to be quite honest, this is a moment of caution, and it's caution really uh, and as someone said in the den remember you've got to make your own trades we we we, we just try to give us the best advice we can but most importantly there are areas that are working and i keep trying to emphasize that for instance we got a stock today right at the low and it's up really nicely will it stay up i don't know but we just had to go for it because everything about it was acting very well, except I've got the 136 uh, rule, and it's so far ho holding into the 3 rule. So we'll see what happens. Okay, let's just do this real quickly. When the Fed comes out, if the IC to subscribers, if the Dow at 3 o'clock is, uh, is over plus 65, that'll give you at least a good close. It has to go all the way through 3 o'clock, that is. It has to rally and be over 65 points higher. The S&P probably about up 8 points. That'll be good. If it's down my 65 or more that's really not good news on the shorter term and if the S&P is down about eight points six to eight points not good news and I'm suspe suspicious of what we've got here because I, I see so much resistance the downside I haven't got automated Chapman wave support levels but at this point it really there are stocks that have held really well and are still technically really good. So to break down, I think it's a process, and it might even take until Monday or Tuesday before we really get that slice right under the 14-period moving average, or it's going to be a spectacular move. And this time tomorrow, I'm saying, what a beautiful day. We'll see what happens. Have a wonderful day. And for subscribers at 2.30, about 2.30 or so, I'll give an update. Not sure we'll do anything. Let's see what happens. Have a wonderful day. Steve comes up next. Then Tom O'Brien. Don't forget. Uh, then Dave White. Don't forget Tom O'Brien and Tom O'Brien's webinar tonight. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.